Hey everybody, welcome back to Everything Ham Radio. Today we're going to be talking about the Yaesu VX-6R Tri-Band handheld transceiver. So stick around. This radio has a lot of features in it and I want to tell you about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to Everything Ham Radio. My name is Curtis, my call sign is Kilo5 Charlie Lima Mike, and like I said, today we're going to be talking about the Yaesu VX-6R Tri-Band handheld transceiver. Now there is a 6E version of this as well, which is the European version, and it doesn't have the option to transmit on the 220 band, as well as some limitations on the receive uh, side of things because of laws and stuff over in Europe but this radio is very packed very well packed with features um, things that I've never seen before things that I question is whether they're useful or not um, things that will drain the battery so we're gonna talk about that but before we do please make sure you click on the subscribe button down in the bottom right hand corner as well as the bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos all right, so let's go ahead and get into the video today. All right, so we are talking about the Yaesu VX-6R. It is a tri-band handheld transceiver. This radio is available on Amazon for $279.99. And while this might seem like a little bit of a steep price tag, this radio is packed with features and is well worth this price. There will be a affiliate link in the description of this video down below so please use that it helps the channel out immensely uh, the price doesn't change for you but I will get a small commission for directing you to go there and buy it so please do alright so the uh, receive frequencies on this radio is rather extensive you can receive from 0 0.5 megahertz all the way up to 999 megahertz and that's pretty well the same on both the US version and the European version. You can receive 6 meter band, 2 meter band, uh, 1.25 and 70 centimeter, as well as air band, uh, FM broadcast, VHF and UHF TV bands, and several more. So it is rather extensive on the receive side of this. Alright, so let's talk about the output power. On the 2 meter and the 70 centimeter band, it has four settings on high power is five watts and then it has three low power settings and why they didn't do like high medium low and extra low or something like that I don't know but they did low one low two low three so low three is 2.5 watts low two is one watt and low one is 0 0.3 watts on the, the US version of this radio you can also transmit on the 220 band it does not have the power output that 2 meter and 440 does, but it is still available. So on the, two, the 220 band, you have a high power of 1.5 watts, low 3 is 1 watt, low 2 is half a watt, and low 1 is 0 0.2 watts. This radio also has a very extensive memory. There are 900 standard memory channels. There are 99 frequency skip memory channels, which are numbered from 901 to 999. There is 11 home channels, which provide a quick, easy way to access the, the frequencies that you normally use, like your home repeater or your simplex channel that you talk on all the time, or things like that. There is also 50 sets of band edge memories, um, which are used in the programmable memory scan, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. There are 24 memory banks as well, labeled 1 through 24. And you can assign 100 channels per bank. So let's say you have, you travel a lot, and you put all of your home repeaters and frequencies that you use in bank number 1. And you go to, say, St. Louis quite regularly, and you want to put all the repeaters that are in St. Louis in a separate bank. So you don't have to worry about them when you're at home and you don't want to have to worry about your home repeaters while you're in St. Louis. So you put all of the St. Louis repeaters in bank number two. Then when you're in St. Louis, you switch to bank two and you have only have those memory channels to worry about or to scan through. 
Now this radio also has several special memory channels, one of which is the emergency automatic ID channel. This channel is uh, the channel that it will switch to during an emergency, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute as well. There are 10 direct memory recall channels, 10 weather broadcast channels, which I believe this is only on the US version. There are 89 popular shortwave broadcast stations and 281 VHF memory channels. Now, I'm not sure if the VHF marine channels um, are available for transmit. Maybe they're only for receive. I'm not sure, but it is there and it already is pre-programmed from the factory. And those do not take up your normal memory channels of 1 to 900. All right, so scanning options. Your scanning options, you have your basic VFO scan. Now, this scan will go from your very bottom of your VFO, the 0.5 megahertz, and it will go up to 999 megahertz, or down, depending on which direction uh, you press when you start your scan. The memory scan will scan only your memory channels. So if you're in your memory channels, you can start your scan and it'll go through just the memory channels. There is also a preferential memory scan. Now these are, if there's a flag you can say on your memory channels where you, when you do this preferential memory scan, it will only scan those certain frequencies. So if you have five repeaters that you always talk on or that you always need to scan, or something like that. You can set those flags and it'll only scan those five channels and you don't have to worry about the rest of them. There's also a memory bank scan. Now we talked about earlier where we have 24 memory banks with 100 channels each. So if you're in St. Louis, for example, and you only want to listen to the, the repeaters that are in St. Louis, you can set it to band number two or bank number two and just scan those memory channels. Now there's also a feature where you can link two memory banks together and that will allow when you're doing your memory bank scan to scan both of those banks at the same time. Next up is the weather alert scan. The weather alert scan basically will continually monitor the weather channels that are close to you and when you're talking on your regular thing it will at a certain interval switch over to the memory to the weather alert channel to see if there's anything there or to see if it has an alert. If it has the alert, it'll alarm on your radio and you can hear the weather alert. The programmable memory scan is what we talked about a little bit earlier on the band's edge scan memory channels. So on this feature, you can have, say, a band edge memory of 145 to 146. Then when you do this programmable memory scan, you will only scan those uh, frequencies. Next up is the priority channel scan, or what is called dual watch. The dual watch is um, when you are on a regular memory uh, channel or a VFO and you enable this, it will switch back to your priority channel. So let's say it's your uh, primary racies repeater or uh, something along those lines, you, it will switch back and listen to see if there's anything going on on that frequency. Uh, to, maybe your wife is calling you or something like that. Um, it will, at certain intervals, switch back there and listen to make sure there's no activity and then switch back. The automatic lamp illumination feature is a really neat feature. Whenever you're scanning, especially if you're if it's at night or you're in a dark room, and your radio will the light on your radio will turn off uh, to conserve on battery. Now, when you're scanning, the when the radio receives a signal, it will turn on the light, turn on the illumination on the screen and on the keypad. So one, you can find the radio if you need to, and two, it will also allow you to see what frequency it is that's receiving. And it'll pause there for a little bit and then continue on and the light will dim as well. Alright, so the smart search. This is a pretty neat little feature that I found. If you're in a new area and you don't have, say, repeaterbook.com or you don't have the app or you don't have a uh, AWRL repeater directory handy or you want to find other channels or something like that to listen to while you're there, you can start this smart search. And it will go from uh, the bottom limit to the top limit of however you have it set. 
and whenever it detects activity it will save that frequency on one of 31 special memory channels and it'll go all the way up through the band and then all the way back down now you there are two options to this one is just do it, to do it once so it'll go up and it'll go back down if it doesn't fill up those 31 memory channels it stops there's also a continuous option for this where it will go all the way up all the way down if it doesn't fill up those 31 then it'll go start again and go up and then back down until it fills up all 31 of those memory channels all right the channel counter this is a pretty neat thing this is like a poor man's frequency analyzer or something like that um, what this feature will do is let's say you're listening to the the frequency you have here on the radio 145.8 and you can hear somebody talking but you tell but you can tell they're off frequency and you don't you don't necessarily know exactly where they're talking you can enable this feature and it will scan 5 megahertz up and 5 megahertz down from the frequency that you're tuned to and determine where the strongest signal is and then switch you to that frequency so if they're talking on 145.79 or something like that it will change it to that frequency which is a pretty neat little feature all right so let's talk about the emergency features of this radio and this is where the emergency uh, frequency memory channel I was talking about earlier comes into play so if say you get lost or something like that and people are looking for you you can press and hold the HM-RV button which is to the left of the 4 button for one second and when you do the radio will be placed in the VHF home channel or correction on the emergency alert channel and it will emit a large alarm, uh, a loud alarm sound and flash the lamp on the radio. Then to complement this, it will also do a emergency automatic ID. And you can set the features up on this on how to do it, what the time interval is, and so on and so forth. But what this will do is it will transmit your call sign in CW over the air either continuously or at some interval every 30 seconds every minute every five minutes I believe um, and this will allow people that are searching for you to home in on your frequency using a directional antenna and find where you are a whole lot easier all right so next up is the automatic range transponder system this system is kind of a um, iffy to me but it is a fairly neat system. This feature uses DCS signaling to notify you or somebody else when you or somebody else come into range with each other that has the same DCS code programmed into their radio. So say your best friend um, has this feature as well and has it turned on. When they come into simplex range of you, your radio will alert to that if they have this feature turned on. Now the downside to this is is that it will transmit this DCS code anytime you transmit, which is totally fine. But it will also transmit this either every 15 or 25 seconds when you're not transmitting. So that to me seems like a very uh, high battery draw and will make your radio not last as long. Which in an emergency situation or something like that, this would not be a good thing but it probably does have its uses and if you are hooked up to power not running off your battery then okay I can see this as being a halfway decent feature to have this radio also has a one button internet connection which you'll see to the left of the seven button and it kind of looks like a little square with circles on it uh, in this picture um, and what this does is you can set it up to uh, do all the DTMF commands that you have to do in order to, to connect to your local wires node. And when you press the button, it does all the DTMF buttons, all the DTMF uh, traffic for you, and you only have to remember just one thing, just to press that one button, and not all the DTMF codes that you would have to send. This radio also has password security. You can set up a power on password 
to the radio uh, as a, just an added security measure to keep unwanted transmissions from being sent to your radio. If you're if you were in a class or something like that, and you don't want your students to key up your radio, or at home your kids have your access to your radio, um, this might be a decent thing to uh, put on your radio. But honestly, if you're going to have this, you're you know it, it probably ain't going to be much of a feature, but it is there if you want it. One thing that I did see with this radio that I have never seen in any other radio, and I could be wrong. If I am wrong, and if y'all know of a radio that has this, leave a comment below and let me know what the radio is. This radio has a CW training feature. The radio will send random Morse code characters via the speaker to help you learn or get better at using CW. And you can set the speed of it, you can set the... Um, the tone of it I believe and you know it just does random characters so you can get a little better at learning Morse code. Alright y'all so what did you think about that radio? I, honestly I think the radio is a pretty neat little radio. It has a fairly decent um, price point on it and the one thing that I didn't mention about the radio is it is submersible. It's submersible up to 3 meters for 30 minutes. So if, say, you work in search and rescue, or you have horses or dogs or something like that, and you go out and feed them, feed them, you don't have to worry about your radio falling into the water trough and getting totally fried. Uh, actually, I had a friend that that happened to. They had a radio. They were out feeding horses. It fell off their of their pocket and into the water trough, and they had to buy a new radio. They ended up buying this radio. So it's a neat little radio. It will work and it has the features that you need as well as some extras and it's a pretty nice little radio. So again there is a link down in the description below for this radio on Amazon. It is an affiliate link so it does help the channel a lot. I do get a small commission if you purchase through my link. So please do it and it helps the channel immensely. Alright y'all, so please make sure you click on the subscribe button down in the bottom right hand corner as well as the bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos. Like this video, share it with your friends, and until next time, this is K5CLM, signing out. See you later y'all. 73.